Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy and today here we're taking a look actually at our first team up deck profile, kicking things off with Ampharos GX. So this has actually been one of my more anticipated non-tag teams to come out of the set. Definitely wanted to try this thing out and see how it might stack up. And actually too, this is the same list we did feature in our recent testing rounds video. So if you guys do want to see how this deck looks in action, I'll be sure to have a link down below in the description for you guys to check that out. And if you guys are unfamiliar with those testing rounds videos that we do here on the channel, they usually kind of feature our early underfined list to begin testing with. So there very well could be maybe some tweaks we could have in here. Just something to keep in mind as we do go through this deck profile. So let's get into it and see how the deck is going to look. So of course, since this is an Ampharos deck, we need some Mareeps. And we are choosing to play the ones from Lost Thunder. There is actually another one coming out in the new set team up but uh, right now i'm choosing to go with this one i think both are actually pretty good uh, but the reason we're going with this one is for this ability if mareep is your active pokemon you may put your opponent's active asleep which is pretty nice because you know before you get out your ampharoses and things like that you're really just trying to stay alive until you can start evolving so that's where the ability is going to come in handy and also there's some other cool plays you can even do in like the mid game where if you know you're about to evolve into ampharos you can promote your mareep put your opponent to sleep and then rare candy into ampharos and attack them while they're still asleep so it just enables some cool defensive plays like i said there is one in team up that i think is also pretty good as well it's like 30 for one lightning uh, and you do have to remember we play Electro Powers in this deck, so I think that one actually is pretty good as well. Just depends, do you want more defensive options in the early game or offensive options? And for me, like I said, I'm going with this one just because if you are if you have Mareep active, you're probably wanting it to just kind of stay alive, more than likely. You're not really trying to attack with it most of the time. But I think, like I said, either one is a valid option. Next up, we have two copies of Flappy. I'm choosing to play the new one from Team Up. Just has a slightly better first attack than the one on the one from Lost Thunder. The one from Lost Thunder is like two lightning, 40 paralysis on a coin flip, but this one is just 30 for one, which is nice. You really don't want to commit two energies to a um, a reap, I'm sorry, to a Flappy anyways. So just kind of opting for the single energy attack here. But then of course, the main attacker of the deck Ampharos GX are playing three of this guy here, and everything about it is pretty decent. It has three pretty solid attacks. 240 HP is also really nice. Uh, the only downsides to it, of course, is going to be that fighting weakness. So things like Buzzle GX, Lycanroc GX, etc., are going to probably run over this deck. Uh, but um, then it also has a three retreat cost, which is also similarly a little bit annoying. But luckily, most of the other attributes about the card are pretty solid. So the main attack that's really exciting here is going to be the first one for just a single lightning energy. 30 damage, nothing too special, but you get all of the Electro Power cards in your discard pile back into your hand. And that's a big deal because of course, Electro Power is that item card. It does 30 more, or I'm sorry, it makes your Lightning Pokemon do 30 more for the turn to your opponent's active and they do stack. So if you play all four Electro Powers, you're doing plus 120 and you get those back every single turn just for a single Lightning Energy is really nice. So you have this uh, single energy attacker, which means you can abuse things like Max Potion, and you can pretty effectively two-shot things in the format as well with this attack. Uh, but also, like I said, the other attacks are pretty decent. The second attack in particular, I didn't really expect to use as much as I actually have been uh, with my games I've been playing with this thing. But for two lightning, you do 150, disc uh, discard all lightning attached to Ampharos. So like I said, I didn't expect to use it too much just because we don't really run any energy acceleration. So it's not an attack you want to base your entire deck around just because uh, we probably don't run enough energy to actually keep cycling through this attack. Uh, but really it's pretty nice because if you're in a situation where you have like two Electro Powers in hand, you can go Electro Power, Electro Power, do 210, which knocks out of course, things like Zorark GX, uh, Buzzle GX, or really anything 210 hit points or lower. So it actually gives this deck a little bit of flexibility. You can kind of play it like the two hit knockout oriented type of strategy with the first attack or if you have the option you can even just go for big one hit knockouts which is really really cool about this card then it does have a gx attack we're admittedly not going to use it quite as much as uh maybe some of these other attacks but it is still decent for a single lightning search your deck for seven pokemon put them into your hand so this is kind of cool if you evolve into Ampharos and you don't really have any of your Electro Powers yet, instead of just hitting for 30 damage, it might actually be better in certain instances to just use the GX attack, grab the rest of your Ampharoses, your Ninetales, Leoes, etc., and just set up to where your next turn is really explosive. So it's pretty decent, but it's really not the star of the show by any means. 
that's going to be Ampharos. Now let's get into some of the support we have here. Uh, we have two copies of Alolan Vulpix, of course, for that beacon attack to search our Pokemon out of our deck. But then also, of course, to go with it, we have two copies of Alolan Ninetales GX to search out item cards with that Mysterious Guidance ability. And we have a ton that we want to get with this deck. Uh, of course, we want rare candies in the early game to get out our Ampharos. Of course, we also want to search out Electro Powers, and we want to search out Max Potions after we take a hit. So Ninetales just has an incredible amount of value in this deck with Ampharos here. Uh, then not too much else in the Pokemon department, guys. We do have one copy of Ditto Prism Star here. So of course, just to, just to give us some flexibility in terms of what we want to evolve into. But then we also have two copies of Tapu Lele GX, of course, to find our supporter cards out of our deck. So pretty streamlined Pokemon line. I do want to point out, I think you actually can build this deck similarly to the like Gardevoir, Swampert, uh, Ninetales style engine. I think that's also completely valid. Um, I felt like I wanted to try something a little bit different though, but I do think that is also equally as valid if you do uh, favor that, that style of like setup engine as well. But going on to the supporters here, we have four copies of Cynthia. Of course, the all around most solid draw supporter we have right now, just a nice shuffle and draw six. But then we have two copies of Lily as well. So Lily, of course, is going to be fantastic on the first turn. Uh, let's say we have the option to grab Lele and to get an Elm or a Lily, but we don't have a draw supporter in hand. Lily just gives us an option for another good first turn option in those types of situations. So draw until we have six in hand, or if it's our first turn, of course, draw until we have eight. But then next up, we actually have a new supporter from Team Up, one I'm pretty excited about. It's going to be the new Erica's Hospitality here. So it's kind of similar to Lily in a way where its effect is based on your hand size, but it's a little bit more flexible actually. So you can only play the card if you have four or fewer cards in hand, not counting uh, the Erica uh, that you've played. So as long as you fulfill that, you can draw equal to the amount of Pokemon your opponent has in play. So if your opponent fills up their whole bench on you know their first turn with a with an Elm and you know just benching some things, you can just draw six cards with no downside. So if we compare that to Lily, of course, Lily, you have to play down your hand to zero cards, which is a little bit difficult if you've been playing uh, in this format for a while. So Erica's is much better because if you have four cards in hand with Lily, you'd only be grabbing two, but Erica can let you get up to six, which is really really nice. So going on, we have three copies of Guzma, of course, to choose what we want to take knockouts on. Uh, then we have two copies of Professor Elm's Lecture. Of course, this is going to be our ideal first turn option in most games, just to search a deck for three Pokemon, 60 HP or less. We really need to get out all of our Mareeps and Vulpixes as soon as we can in this deck. And then to round out the supporters, we have one copy of Volkner as well. So even though we do have the Alone Ninetales to search out our items, I think we actually might need a little bit of extra help here just because there's so many items we're actually looking for in this deck. So of course, Volkner, search your deck for an item and a Lightning Energy, put them into your hand, shuffle your deck. And not only is this nice at grabbing things like rare candies, but the play I like the most with Volkner is because you can have turns where your Ampharos takes a hit and then you can play Volkner, grab Max Potion and the energy you need to replace the energy that Max Potion would remove. So any of those plays like that, but also just grabbing Electro Powers, rare candies, etc. So going on to the rest of the trainer cards, we have four copies of Ultra Ball up next, of course, to search out our Pokemon in the deck. We also have four copies of Rare Candy. That's going to let us skip those flappies and go straight to our Ampharos GX. We have four copies of Electro Power. That, of course, is that item card that Ampharos' first attack is based around here. Just plus 30 for your Lightning Pokemon. And like I said, this does stack, of course, too. So if we have all Electro Powers at our disposal, it's a free plus 120 every turn thanks to that first attack on Ampharos. Uh, next up, we have three copies of Max Potion as well. So like I said, Ampharos is going to be a single energy attacker, and we can abuse this pretty effectively. And even when thinking about the second attack, if we take a big knockout with the second attack, discard all of our energy, and our Ampharos gets swung back on, well, guess what? Before we even attach energy for turn, we can Max Potion and clear off all that damage and then just keep on attacking. So next up, we also have two copies of Choice Band as well, in addition to our Electro Powers. Just another damage modifier at our disposal. Uh, especially good when we want to abuse the second attack on Ampharos, because the Electro Powers are going to get discarded. And we can't get them back until we use that first attack on Ampharos. So Choice Band is actually nice in these situations where you want to abuse the second attack, just because it's going to stay on Ampharos. Unless, of course, your opponent has something like a Field Blower, as an example. Then next up, we have actually a bunch of one-ofs to round out the list here. 
the first of which is going to be one copy of Rescue Stretcher. Of course, just as a form of recovery to get back some of our Pokemon. We have one weakness policy. So this is actually one of the ways we're going to try to combat against things like Buzzwool and Lycanroc, just as an example. Uh, so the fact that we can actually search this out pretty much at any time is also really, really nice here. Now, I will have to admit, this is kind of a flexible spot in the deck. Uh, we don't really know exactly what the team-up metagame is going to be looking like once the set is legal for play. So it remains to be seen how viable Buzzwool and Lycanroc decks are still going to be. So this is definitely a pretty flexible spot if there are some other cards you're trying to fit in here. This is definitely, I think, one of the first cards that you guys can get rid of. But for right now, it seems kind of nice at dealing with those fighting Pokemon. Next up, we have one copy of Timer Ball. So this is gonna be ideally to maybe grab off of an Aloha Nine Tails to get out our Ampharoses without having to discard things with the Ultra Ball. So of course, flip two coins for each heads, search your deck for an evolution card and put it into your hand. So, of course, just, just to find our evolutions and things like that. And then one copy of Switch as well to round out our items here. So if you'll notice, like I said, Ampharos has that pesky three retreat cost. Alola Ninetales has a two retreat cost. Uh, so we don't really have a lot of mobility in this deck. So I like the idea of one Switch just because we can find it at any time with Alola Ninetales when we want to. And then just to round out the list from there, we have one copy of Thunder Mountain Prism Star as well. So this is going to be our only stadium in the deck, but really fantastic card in here on the turns that we can find it. So of course, it's going to reduce the attack cost of our lightning Pokemon by a single lightning energy. So that means we can even attack with Ampharos for zero energy sometimes, or even use the second attack for one energy, which is crazy once you factor in all the different damage modifiers that we have access to. And then just to round out those guys, we have a total of eight lightning energy in the deck here. We really don't need a whole lot, you know, even though the second attack does discard our energy. Uh, most of the time we're abusing that first attack and uh, eight is probably going to get the job done most of the time. Don't really need too many more than that. But yeah, guys, that is going to be our first attempt at an Amphorus GX deck here. Deck is a lot of fun. Of course, like with any Stage 2 deck, it is a little bit clunky at times, but whenever you get this thing going, it's pretty good. And it's actually one of the few decks that I think can really knock out these new tag teams pretty effectively, thanks to all the Electro Powers, Choice Bands, and the second attack on Amphorus. You can basically one-shot anything in the game, which is really cool. I really like the flexibility of being able to play this deck like a grindier, two-hit knockout-oriented deck with the first attack or just take big one hit knockouts it's really really nice but yeah guys that's going to be like i said our attempt here at Amphros. i hope you enjoyed a look at this deck if you guys are ready for team up definitely stay tuned for the channel we're going to have a ton of content for team up coming up over the next several weeks so definitely stay tuned but if you did enjoy this video feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store rarecandytcg.com like the playmat you saw in this video as an example. Definitely do that. It would mean a lot to us. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.